everyone, welcome back to Frenchie's Bakery. Today we are going to be doing a very, very simple dessert. It is just going to be thrown together in a couple of minutes and then it's gonna take like an hour to chill and then you can just devour it. So it's a super, super simple dessert that tastes super, super good. And I'm wearing the most appropriate shirt for this video. I got this years ago, like, I, I would say maybe 10 years ago, and I still have it. It's just been chilling in my closet. I think I wore it once whenever it was like cool, and then I just never wore it again. So I'm really happy I kept it because it's the perfect shirt for this video. What the fudge. So cool, I love it, and I am really in the fudge spirit. I am so ready to make some fudge and eat some fudge. This is my grandfather's favorite, and I figured I should give him a pick-me-up with this quarantine, so I'm gonna make his favorite peanut butter fudge, give you guys the recipe, you guys can make it for your grandparents, and then drop it off in their driveway, and make them happy during this sad quarantine time. So, let's get into the ingredients that you're going to need. You're going to need an eight by eight inch pan, you also can use a nine by nine inch, it doesn't really matter. Um, some unsalted butter I have here, some peanut butter, some salt, some vanilla extract, and that's it. That is all the ingredients. So we are going to cut up our butter, so let me zoom in the camera and show you guys what I mean. So let me zoom the camera in on my cutting board. All right, so I have a cup of unsalted butter here, and mine is actually at room temperature. It doesn't matter what temperature it's at because we're gonna be melting this in the microwave. And I am just going to cut this up so it melts easier. We don't want anything to like burn in the microwave. So I'm just going to cut this up into little cubes. And then I'm going to add all of these little butter cubes into a microwave safe bowl here and then a cup of peanut butter, and then we're going to add in a fourth, a teaspoon of salt, and then we're gonna microwave this for about a minute, and then stir it, and just keep on microwaving it until it is fully melted. And once it is fully melted, we're gonna add in a little bit of vanilla extract. I'm just gonna add in a splash, so probably like a teaspoon. And then we are going to add in our final ingredient, and that is going to be powdered sugar. So let me grab my huge container. This bad boy, I'm constantly using it. I am always using powdered sugar for all of my icings, so I could not Stand buying little packs of dried anymore. So I went to Costco, I bought in bulk, and then I bought this big thing to store it because I just couldn't stand going to the grocery store every single day because I constantly had cake orders going on and I needed to constantly be buying powdered sugar. So I got this and let me tell you, I absolutely love it. It comes in handy and it's just so, so great. And I just store it in my closet. Luckily I have a tiny little closet over in the corner in my kitchen. So that's really, really nice. So we're gonna add in four cups of powdered sugar and we are just going to stir it around. And I'm gonna add in two just to start things off and then I'll add in two more and mix it up. pan here and then I have some wax paper in it just so we can lift it out very easily afterwards. You can also use tin foil and then spray it. So I have some baking spray here and I'm just gonna spray the top just a little bit. And then we're just going to put our fudge right inside the pan. And then I'm just gonna take the back of my spatula and just press it down to make it nice and flat and even. Once you have your fudge in your pan, you can then put it in the fridge for about one to two hours, and then we're going to pop it out and cut it. All right, so our fudge is ready to be cut up. I cannot wait to taste this. It smells so good. So like I said, you just put some wax paper in here and then it's really easy to pull out. So we'll just set that aside. And then I have it here on a cutting board so we can cut out some nice, Wears. Just gonna take the wax paper off 
for that side and then we're just going to cut straight down and make little bite sizes. And I love this recipe because it is not involving the stove. I do not like boiling milk because half the time it always just runs over. A lot of recipes call for not stirring the milk during the two and a half minutes that it's on the stove and that's a recipe for disaster because then it's gonna boil over. So I really love this recipe. It only involves the microwave, not the stove top, which is very, very nice. So you can cut out any type of size that you would like. I like to make mine a little bit smaller because it's a really sweet treat. So you don't want it to be too overwhelming. And then I'm just going to place them on this nice cake stand here. And I'm really excited for tomorrow. My grandmother's birthday is this weekend, so I'm going to take her root beer floats tomorrow. And then I figured that my grandfather should have something that he really loves too. So I'm making this for him. So I'm really excited to drop off that stuff tomorrow. It's really good to have a treat every now and then, and especially for your birthday. I know my grandma likes this too, but I like to take her rubber floats because it's her favorite and that's kind of a little tradition I have going on, so I'm very excited. And I'm gonna have a rubber float for myself. So, it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish cutting this up and place them on the cake stand. It is as simple as that. I'm telling you, this is probably the easiest dessert I have up on this channel. It's so easy and so, so yummy. It is just the quickest, fastest, throw together thing, and I absolutely love it, and I cannot wait to give it to my grandfather. He's going to be so surprised. I've never made him peanut butter fudge before, so I'm really, really excited to like, really, really surprise him, because he'll never be expecting it. And we are going to go see them a few days before my grandmother's birthday because we're not going to be home during her birthday. So they're going to be extra, extra surprised. So I'm going to call them and tell them to come outside so we can social distance and stay nice and safe. And then we will have just a tiny little eating party together for my grandmother's birthday. So I'm going to be uploading this after we go see them so it will not ruin the surprise. So don't worry. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Bye.